Good morning, everybody. This is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Today is Friday, June 26th, 2020. My name is the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. The General Assembly of our association is in full swing late this week. And if you were unable to watch the service of the living tradition last night, I strongly encourage you to pull it up this weekend. Reverend Danielle DeBona preached exactly what a lot of us need to hear right now about this moment and this faith. There was another piece of business that came up yesterday afternoon that I want to unpack a little bit in this setting. It's an article of faith for us, quite literally uh, an article in the UUA's bylaws, that we go back and review our principles, purposes, and sources. That's Article 2 of our bylaws, every 10 to 15 years. The seven principles and six sources are important, but they are not a creed. And one of the ways that we know that they aren't a creed is that they are iterative. They have evolved over the last 50 years, and each generation is given the task of rewriting and reinterpreting them again and again. The last time this happened was in 2010, after a rich debate, the proposed revisions failed to pass at the General Assembly in Minneapolis that year. This year, the board of the UUA appointed a commission to review Article 2 to propose changes at the 2022 General Assembly. And in the charge to that commission, the board writes, the commission is charged with reviewing all sections of Article 2 and is free to revise, replace, or restructure them as needed to meet the objective stated above. There is nothing sacred about the number of principles or sources, nor their specific wordings, nor in the way that Article 2 is laid out. We encourage creativity. The board would like to see an Article 2 that is inspirational, memorable, and poetic. The language should be inclusive and welcoming and explicitly anti-racist. Article 2, it must be remembered, are broad statements of principle and purpose, not detailed programmatic or implementation plans. We therefore, this is a different section, but, but core to the charge to this commission. We therefore charge this commission to root its work in love as a principal guide in its work, attending particularly to the ways that we and our root traditions have understood and articulated love and how we have acted out of love. I remember hearing a sermon about a decade ago from the Director of Religious Education in Baltimore, talking about the, the seven principles, but lamenting that they are full of nouns and, and sorely lacking in active verbs. Faith, Becky said, was about doing, not about passive affirmation. Becky Brooks, who preached that sermon in Baltimore, is one of the commissioners charged with working on the principles and sources over the next several years. Paula, Col Paula Cole-Jones, who has been central to the work of drafting and proposing the eighth principle, is one of the commissioners. Rob Spierko, who helped lead the Tennessee Valley UU congregation through the aftermath of the mass shooting there, finding healing and resilience in, in a hard, hard moment, is one of the commissioners. And Reverend Cheryl Walker, who asked my ministerial cohort three years ago if we wanted to make changes or have an impact, who ended the service of the living tradition that year by saying, we are bound together by the belief that with the, these proverbial hands we can build a future for ourselves and those not yet born that is better than the world we inherited. We are bound together by the knowledge that together, each of us is unique and valued for our differences and can make a dream of a world of peace and justice a reality. And when that day comes and someone calls our names in remembrance, let it be said of us, you may not know our names, but know this of us, we made a difference. Cheryl Walker is one of the commissioners. So there's lots to do, and we'll be about it. As a reminder and announcement, rather than having our own competing Sunday morning worship this week, we're going to send our folks to attend General Assembly's worship service on Sunday morning. That begins at 9 o'clock Central Time. The link is in this video description and in your e-blast. 
We'll follow that up with a Zoom coffee hour from 10.15 to 11, religious education for our kids at 11, and at that point, uh, if you missed the first General Assembly service, they are doing it again at noon central time for folks on the West Coast. So see you then, and have a great weekend.